And you are watching Influence Media, PSI TV, the Netflix of Biz Brands. What up, what up, what up? It is our Tuesday morning live. We're talking about from content to transformation. And we're going to dive into it because, guys, we need to be pushing out that content. We need to be helping lives to be changed for the better. Let's go. So this is always about having the competitive advantage. We're talking about your content will deliver results, especially if you share it on PSI TV. So we're going to look at what the Bible says, what research says, what one huge influencer has to say about consistency. My clients say you're closer to victory than you think. Guys, we do this every Tuesday live at 1030 Eastern Join us live or later. I do reply to comments, even to the haters. You're welcome. Post your stuff. I do invite the engagement. So what does the Bible have to say about all of this? So, well, there is a story in Matthew 13. It's the parable of the sower. And I'll just read it really quickly. This is not all of it, but this is a section. Hear, the, hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the world, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and, it's prove, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word, understands it, and he indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. So in the earlier part of the story, the sower is throwing the seeds. We're going to say, now this is not an interpretation theologically, guys. This is an application, okay? Because I believe that if we just hear the word, but we don't do it, it's like filthy rags. You, may, you need to apply what you learn. So this is an application, not a theological dissertation, Okay. It, earlier in the story, the sower is casting seeds. We're going to say the seeds is your content for application purposes. Seed is your content. The sower is casting the seeds and some of it falls on this soil that immediately the birds come and pick it up. You put your content out there on various platforms and people just scroll right by. It's, it's not, even, not even consumed at any level. And then there is the content that people glance at maybe go, huh, interesting. Or they may even, you know, connect with you and say, hey, let me get more information. It looks promising at first, but it really goes nowhere. And then there's that content that people watch, engage with, and maybe even convert, buy something from you or attend your event or something like that. Subscribe to your channel, whatever. And this is the deal, guys, because if you didn't put the content out there in the first place, your opportunity is absolutely zero. But we will never really know ahead of time which content in which platform is going to be placed in front of the person who is going to consume it and produce a harvest, harvest convert for you. <clears throat> the Bible also says in 1 Kings 4 uh, and Solomon and Solomon's wisdom excelled. Now, Solomon, if you're not familiar with the Bible, Solomon was a king and he was well known across the world. Leaders from all over the world came to Solomon, the queen of Sheba, for example. And she says, oh, I heard all about you. But when I got here and saw everything, it's not even the half of what was told. Now, there was no social media back in Solomon's day. So the fact that Solomon's wisdom was heard of in countries far, far away speaks to an amazing thing. And one of the reasons is he, as it says in verse 32, he spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. Now, if you know anything about songs, 
they tend to catch on and people sing them, they become infectious and people pass them on. So when he's making these wise statements and proverbs and making songs, basically guys, he's creating content and the content becomes viral and it gets, it gets passed along. And that's how someone far away in other countries with no social media, no television, no print media is hearing about Solomon. What about you? Are you producing your content? And not just a smattering every now and again, consistently and with volume. We need to be producing the volume. Remember, we're using the, the concept of content as seeds that we're throwing, we're casting out there, we're sowing seeds. If you consider that the conversations you have with people are seed planting expeditions, that's how I look at it for myself seed planting expeditions. Not everyone I speak to is going to be my ideal client, but a lot of times they know someone who is. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone, I know someone who does that. Oh, you know, my friend so-and-so does that. So if you have your conversations and create your content with a mindset that these are seed planting expeditions, you never know when that seed is going. Some seeds die, some seeds get caught up by the birds, some, te some seeds start to sprout, but don't actually grow into anything. And then there will be some that will convert for you. Research says, now some of you may know, I'm a doctoral candidate at Liberty University. My research interest is in influential reach, leadership. And so I am always in the various uh, academic literature, peer-reviewed content and there was something that I picked up, a peer-reviewed document, um, and it says the present study has advanced or theoretical understanding of influencer marketing pathways by introducing and finding evidence for the practical and theoretical value of two well-established theoretical notions, namely consistency and scarcity. So we're focusing on the consistency side. So it's not just a matter of creating the content, but you want that content to be consistently created and also in a consistent style and fashion. So people, because you're also building on your brand, guys. I remember when I just got started in business decades ago, I would have, I would, you know, I needed a letterhead and I would create a logo on the spot and it would be this letterhead. And then the next time I didn't even remember what I did and I created another one. And so my business had multiple logos. I, I was just all over the place. So it's not just consistency in creating content, but also consistency in your style, in the in your brand development. So, but it, this is peer review, guys. So this is the, this is an academic research that is telling us that it's practical and it is a practical evidence that consistency is important in influencer marketing. I got a DM the other day about somebody who was like, yeah, I mean, it's easy for you to build this brand because you already have this big audience. I was like, dude, just start. He was discouraged by the fact that he had no following, he had no audience, etc. Go to my podcast and look at the timestamp of my first episode. It's 2017. It just now hit the top 10. And in that six year period, I did not miss every week one to three podcasts for six years. And so people are making podcasts and thinking in 90 days, they're somehow going to blow up. When the reality is that you're finding your voice for the first year, it takes years. And if you can think of decades instead of days, you'll be so much further when the decade comes than the people who thought in days the entire 10 years. So I'm gonna share with you that while I am on YouTube right now, and one of the places we should be putting content is absolutely YouTube. You can go from YouTube to TV, guys. If you are, if you can YouTube, you can TV. We're over here at PSI TV, and we have a Netflix-like channel on Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, Vita TV. But we also create these brand channels for including Apple TV, Roku, and all of that. So you can, if you are creating content for podcasts, for YouTube, or anything like that, even for your website, you're doing blogs and so forth, you're probably a great candidate for us because if you can YouTube, you can TV. And TV is another platform to put your content out there. And I want you to consider TV, guys. A lot of you are have this myth in your head, TV's not for me, it's too expensive. No, 
PSI TV is crushing all of that. And if you can find the money for a romantic date night, you can be on TV. We have made that possible. So you can be on TV, especially PSI TV. I can't speak for all television channels, but on PSI TV. And guess what, guys? The fact is that when you go to YouTube, as you are right now watching this, if you're watching this on YouTube, because this show will also be on my television channel, if you're watching this on YouTube, before you found me, and even when you're watching me, ding, 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 there's all this distracting stuff going on because YouTube is a vortex. The goal is to keep you on the YouTube platform. They don't care what you are consuming. They just want you to be on YouTube and consuming whatever. But when you put your content on PSI TV, you become the star. The focus is all on you. And we are ad-free TV because we have decided at PSI TV that we don't want your content interrupted for an ad because we know what that does to audience uh, attention and retention. So if you can YouTube, you can TV. PSI TV not only has a channel on Roku and Amazon Fire and all of that. We build the channel apps for you. So can you imagine your brand having a channel button that sits beside the Netflixes and the D Disney's? Guys, listen, whatever your niche is, I promise you, I've done a, an, uh, an episode on this before. Whatever your niche is, there is a Roku TV channel being built right now. You're gonna be late to the game if you wait too much longer. And then it will be, you know, just like when Facebook got started, YouTube got started, if you were there, you got a lot of attention. But the moment the volume of content got there, it becomes harder to find you. So when someone goes to search on Roku, for example, and they start to type in, let's say they start to type in PS, all the things that have PS start to fill in and there's PSI TV, in addition to the people that I send directly to the channel. So your channel can be on P on a uh, Roku TV if you wish we build those as well. The fact is there are so many options to choose from. And if you are not on all these content platforms, your audience has no opportunity to select you from the bunch. But when you appear on TV, you stand out from the rest because guys, anybody can be on YouTube. Any joker can be there. It is free to be on YouTube. I'm not, you should be on YouTube. I value YouTube. But I'm just saying that when something is free, the level of value perceived is less than, and, and jokers are not on TV, guys, because it takes a little bit more effort to be on television. And so the jokers are not there. So there is a perceived authority and credibility when you are on television. You really do need to be making the content, guys. The content is the seed. You are distributing the seeds. It's seed planting conversations, and those seeds can become a harvest for you. Your next step, should you choose to take it, is to either book yourself to be a guest on PSI TV, and we'll interview you on our channel. We interview subject matter experts, usually authors, coaches, and business owners. If you're an entertainer, we tend to focus on the business of your business, of your entertainment, not so much we don't singing and dancing on, on, our, on our channel. However, if you want a brand channel of your own to display your stuff, I mean, right now, guys, you can find Bitcoin channels, coaching client, uh, coaching channels, legal channels, whatever the niche is, you can find it appearing now as a, as a brand channel on television. If you want a brand channel of your own, then we do need to have a chat to just make sure that because that's going to be a more long term working relationship. And we want to make sure that we're working with people who want to work with us. So you would simply go to the PSI TV website and a link for that will be in the description. And then you can just simply book the time to chat with us. At the end of all of this is influential reach. That's the goal of this, guys. I'm looking for that for myself. I'm not there yet. You know, I'll tell you this. I, I went to an event the other day and I met this gentleman who said he was a private banker. And I'm like, oh, I don't have enough money to, to do business with you. And he says, that's the myth right there. 
that it's really about relationship banking and it did not require that I had millions of dollars to be a client of his. And I realized right then and there, that is a problem that we're finding with many of you who have an interest in TV, but you just have the mindset from the history of television that it is brutally expensive and out of the ballpark for you. That is no longer the truth when it comes to PSI TV. And we no longer see ourselves just in the TV business. This is our primary platform, but it is not our only platform. PSI TV, we see ourselves in the influential reach business. And when we share um, an interview on our television channel, we repurpose that content for a podcast, for uh, our social media platforms here on YouTube and so on. We are also able to create a press release for you. And the last press release I did got picked up by over a hundred publication, depends on the package that you pick. So we already have your information and it's just a matter of sending it out to multiple locations. Remember that seed planting opportunity because we don't know where that person is going to see and consume your content. But when you create the seed planting expedition guys especially if one of those seeds is on television you get known as the obvious choice from the pack you become the first name that people think of when they want your offer your product or service you basically become a celebrity in your space in the lineup of your competitors and ultimately you can get paid as one as well Trudy Behrman here thank you so much for joining me today and check us out next Tuesday, 1030 Eastern for another live episode. And if this value, if this content was a value, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and check that notification bell so you can be alerted when we make new content so you don't miss it. Bye for now.